I want to show you something that I did as I was getting started as a copywriter. This was back maybe somewhere in that range of like 2005 to 2008 or so when I was just discovering copywriting and hearing things like 10 times as many people read your headline as read the body of your ad. And so your headline has to like do an incredible selling job and that there are proven headlines that work to sell things and all of these bits of copywriting wisdom that um, are are you know perceived as being very valuable to the beginner to the newbie who um, ultimately is just looking for a way to make things work and in looking for the way to make things work, this newbie, this beginner is often looking for magic pills, like that, the whole idea of like, oh, if I just if I just copy this incredible headline formula, I'm going to get rich. And yeah, like I I found myself wanting to believe this, too. And so I did I did this. I took, you know, all these three by five note cards and I wrote one headline idea or formula per note card. So like how to free, I'm going to skip, I'm, I'm not going to read them all amazing secrets of, and there's headline formulas. There are just words to use in headlines. Um, there are there are concepts and principles. So uh, digging into a, a different era of writing these, offer instant improvement, make a big promise, provide news, provoke curiosity, fast and easy, pr preferably instant, make it the most important thing in their day, begin with the word announcing, Begin your headline with the word this. Write a testimonial style headline. Uh, let's see. Warn the reader to delay buying until they read. So like there's lots of interesting concepts in here. And I, I will say that I did actually learn about what other copywriters have done that's worked in their headline. And I know that some copywriters really lean on things like this to, to, uh, I, I guess to, to, to stimulate their own thinking when it comes to writing a headline. Uh, here's, here's another era where it was more of like a fill in the blanks, how I accomplishment by doing something unexpected, like how I got rich in copywriting by, refusing to work more than three hours a day, uh, how I improve my problem, number of ways to promise, get rid of problem forever, read this and promise. So uh, read this and get your first copywriting client. Uh, want to be a uh, better condition, want to be rich, question mark. <laughs> uh, what never ever to and then common chore or action. Uh, so what never ever to do when you are starting your dishwasher? I don't know. Um, so so there are all of these and some of them lean more towards the clickbait. Others are super, super broadly useful and just represent the kind of language that, that, uh, that works for opening a conversation or communicating that you have something of value to somebody. So like a how-to headline. Uh, I know that at one point there were publishers who wouldn't let copywriters write how-to bullets or headlines. And it's just because that can get very lazy or you can get very lazy writing how-to. And so they were challenging their copywriters to be less lazy writing, uh, writing their bullets and headlines. But how to, like you want to teach somebody how to something, saying how to blank is a decent way to introduce that idea. Uh, let's see, I wrote down security and old age, freedom from worry. These are appeals that, that work consistently, uh, confirm suspicions, uh, lots of different interesting language in here. And then 
I even have things like from Gary Halbert's famous uh, Tova perfume launch ad, wife of famous movie star swears under oath her new perfume does not contain an illegal sexual stimulant. So I had some example ideas here. A lot of them were Gene Schwartz, change your life next week, uh, turns up your digestive furnace and burns flab right out of your body. That's a that's a classic weight loss ad from uh, from Eugene Schwartz and uh, is this the world's easiest yoga? That's interesting. Uh, now, what? Now a blunt promise by an eminent dermatologist. Every cell of your face has a clock in it. Here's how to wind those clocks backwards. A lot of these are old ads. And frankly, if you tried to copy those old ads today because of how culture has shifted, evolved, changed, um, you are going to get a really weird reaction from your market. And I think that that speaks to my um, my hesitation in using these. Ultimately, uh, I, I did learn a lot of valuable copywriting language by going through this process. And at times, I would flip through this stack in its various states and stages, and I would write a bunch of headlines. And I would then combine those headlines, and I would... Uh, you know, rework those headlines until I got to a headline that was, uh, th that worked for what I wanted to say. And so in some regards, this is, this was a valuable practice to write down all these headline formulas, to pull them from all the places that I could pull them from. And, um, and, and it was valuable, but ultimately the reason an ad works is because it, connects with a market and introduces something to them that is um, that feels unique, that is a proven solution to a problem, um, that is simple to understand, that is uh, it, it evokes some kind of emotion that's intellectually engaging and that feels new. And so many times, if all you're doing is focusing on just, oh, how can I copy this proven, who, who else wants to copy this proven headline formula and get rich? If that's what you're focusing on, you're going to really miss out on that opportunity to actually connect with your prospect and put a message in front of them that they find interesting and compelling and frankly, that they even find worth paying attention to. And that's why I, uh, a long time ago, kind of rejected this superficial approach to copywriting of, oh, I'm just going to copy swipe files and all of that. Because really, especially if you're going to put yourself into a more competitive market as a copywriter, whether it's as a freelancer or selling your own offers, if you're offers don't stand out, if your, uh, if your copy doesn't come across as feeling unique and different and new and interesting in that way, if, if you feel like, oh, here's just another person writing just another advertisement to me, nobody's going to give you the light of day and your marketing is not going to get engagement um, it's not going to get attention. It's not going to uh, actually catch the interest of your target audience. And certainly without those things, it's not going to stimulate their desire for your product or service, whatever you're offering. And it's not going to get them to take action. And so having these copywriting headline formulas, it's not a bad thing. And studying the language and learning the language and picking up the different um, the different nuances of how different copywriters have constructed headlines through time can be uh, illuminating to developing your chops as a copywriter, getting your writing skill up to at least like a fightable baseline. But if you really want to become a much more powerful copywriter, if you really want to connect with your audience on a deeper level, if you really want to engage with them and, um, and, and get them diving in, 
it will pay off big time to focus on the deeper psychology of headlines and of messages that go into your uh, into your advertising. So like what is the underlying message that resonates? And so if you can think about that in terms of the copy that you're writing and the headlines that you're writing and like how can I convey this proven thing like in in that regard, the um, the appeal, the something like easier chores being a an evergreen appeal and um and instead of thinking about hey uh, how like how can i use a who else headline for this product maybe the product is uh, a roomba vacuum and it like maybe the easier chores appeal like if your focus is hey how can i tell this person that they don't have to work as hard in their chores in their house to keep their house clean how can i communicate that very easily very directly it could be something as simple as um, never vacuum your house again period and then it can be this explanation of how this vacuum allows you to never have to vacuum your house again and um and like we can all remember what um what 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 a toil and what a pain it was as children when suddenly it was our chore to vacuum the house and um and we used to have to drag around the big vacuum and uh and 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 it was never a fun chore and it always seemed to take forever and it was big and heavy and loud and and you know nobody liked it uh but you know, as adults, we've come to accept the drudgery of having to vacuum our house. As adults, we've come to accept how um, how that's just something we deal with. And heck, you know, as parents, we may have even joked a time or two with our kids that, hey, the reason we had you is so we don't have to vacuum anymore. Well, what if you could free yourself and your kids and anybody else of that drudgery just by uh, you know, purchasing the right next vacuum for your home. And it's a vacuum that will do all the work for you where all that you have to do is set it up once and, um, and, and empty it out. Yes. Um, in a, in a very easy, simple way. Um, but you set it up once and you never have to vacuum again. I don't know. Like that's, that's an example of using the underlying structure to identify, okay, these, you know, these, um, these deep desires that we have, the psychology that we have is consistent. And if we can learn that, if we can, if we can learn, uh, what people are actually paying attention to, why they're paying attention to it and, uh, what is engaging them and pulling them into a selling message will probably number one realize that it's not actually the words like these words on these three by five cards are not magic spells they're not magic spells they are uh simply combinations of sounds which represent ideas and uh it's the underlying ideas behind the headlines that are what actually get people engaged and wanting to buy. And if you can uh, identify the universality of the ideas that get people engaged and wanting to buy, then you're not worried about headline formulas. Yes, you may use the same language, but you just focus on, okay, what is the message? Like, how can I connect with my buyer? Like, what is, what is, most appealing, most interesting to them. How can I speak that to them in a way that will get their attention and help them understand, yeah, this is for me. And then how can I carry that attention all the way through to the sale? And, um, 
And in that regard, actually, I would recommend I have a high velocity copywriting program that I'll make sure to include a link in the description here. It's part of my BTMS Insiders training library, and it's a, you know, one low fee monthly membership and you get access to everything, including the high velocity copywriting and its companion like templates training, where I just deliver templates for effective long copy. And yeah, you can use some headline formulas if you're going to write this copy, but most importantly, it teaches you the underlying principles and strategies behind highly effective sales messages and how to adopt those and adapt those for whatever words you choose to put together to represent those ideas. And, um, and in that regard, I think it's pretty powerful training. And I have uh, you know, a bunch of uh, happy, happy customers who've gone through the training too, who, um, who, you know, they, they get that exact same value out of it. Now, oh, what do you think? I would love for you to leave a comment below. Let me know on a scale of one to 10, how valuable you found this training and, or this, this video and why. So one to 10, let me know how valuable you found it and why, what was your biggest takeaway? What was your action item? What was your perspective shift on headline formulas or copywriting in general? Also click that like button before you go. So you get more content like this delivered to you, to your, uh, and answer so the magical algorithms of the internet. Know to share this content with more people like you who would find it valuable. And, uh, and you can share it with some, with somebody in your life directly who you think would find it valuable as well. Also, one last thing, make sure you subscribe before you go. You can subscribe here. You can also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com to get more content through me uh, or from me Monday through Friday, including these videos, articles, and uh, more free training available only to email subscribers. My name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Again, check out the links in the description for, um, for, for more resources on this. And thank you for watching. I hope you did get 10 out of 10 value. That's it's always my goal, and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video issue. I'll see you soon. Bye.